If you've ever wished that your website could just update itself with fresh, engaging, relevant content, then today's video is for you. Imagine this, you're a restaurant owner and every Monday morning, a new weekly special magically appears on your website, complete with a mouthwatering photo, a detailed recipe, and even SEO optimized descriptions to attract hungry customers. Or perhaps you run an online store and you want to showcase the latest products without the hassle of manual updates. Well, that's exactly what we're building today using the dynamic duo of Webflow and BuildShip. BuildShip is a low code visual backend platform and it's changing the way that businesses automate their processes. Here's how we'll make this happen. First up, we'll begin by linking your Webflow website with the incredible automation platform BuildShip. This will establish the foundation for seamless communication. Next up, we'll design a custom workflow that becomes your website's personal content creator. It'll brainstorm creative menu items, craft detailed recipes, generate captivating descriptions, and even conjure up enticing images of your culinary creations, all with SEO in mind. Finally, we'll connect this workflow directly to your Webflow's e-commerce or CMS site. This integration will ensure that your freshly generated content automatically appears in the designated areas of your site saving you countless hours of manual updates. I'm using the Chomp restaurant template from the Webflow Marketplace as our example. Whether you're running a restaurant, an online store, or any other type of Webflow powered website, the principles we'll cover today can be easily tailored to your specific needs. I'll also show you how to schedule it so your website updates itself like clockwork while you're enjoying your morning coffee. Let's dive in and transform your Webflow site into a self-updating content powerhouse. We'll start here in the Webflow dashboard. Head up to Marketplace and click on Apps. This is where we'll search for the BuildShip app, which will tie your BuildShip and Webflow accounts together. Click on BuildShip and then click on Install app. If you have multiple BuildShip projects, Choose the one you'd like to tie Webflow to. And once you're authenticated, you'll see the Webflow icon here under your integrations. Next, head into your Webflow website or create a new one. In this example, we'll be using the Chomp template. It's a great free template available when you set up a new Webflow website. Give your site a name and then click create site. This is a very simple, very clean restaurant e-commerce site. And we're going to use it as a base to have BuildShip create a new menu item on a regular basis. If you click into the e-commerce section and then click on products, you'll see the products already loaded. Take a minute to familiarize yourself with the fields that each product has. This is called a schema, and we'll discuss more about the product schema in a second back in BuildShip. But for now, click into settings, Grab your site ID and head back to BuildShip. Here in BuildShip, let's start with the Webflow product generator template. This template gives you everything you need to turn BuildShip into your personal culinary creator. It's set to run every month, but you can change the cron trigger to be whatever frequency you choose. Next, we have the OpenAI Assistant node. So you just need to put in your API key and your Assistant ID which you'll get from playground.openai.com. By clicking Assistance, creating a new assistant, give it a name, choose your model, and make sure it's returning a JSON object. Then copy the assistant ID back into the field in BuildShip. Ship. 
Next, let's run through the instructions we're giving our assistant. These are important because your assistant really will follow these to the letter. So it's important that you're clear, concise, and consistent with these. For this example, we're assigning our assistant the role of a takeaway food menu expert, creating new, unique, mouth-watering menu items each time they're asked. We're giving it a tool, the Create Image tool, to generate an image of the item. We're dictating its output, and that must be two JSON objects, one called Product and one called SKU. And we've given it the format that we need it returned in. This is really important for Webflow, and it will differ a little bit depending on the way you've set up the fields in your Webflow, CMS, or e-commerce site. Now, where do you get these product and SKU JSON objects from? How do you know what fields your Webflow CMS has set up? Well, right at the bottom of this template, we've got a node called list products and SKUs. If you put in your site ID that you just copied from your Webflow settings and run a test, it will return the first 100 products and SKUs within your website. Here under items, you'll see product and SKUs for each item. But what you need to focus in on is the field data object under both product and SKU. This will tell you the structure Webflow is expecting when you create a new product. And keep in mind that in Webflow, every product must have at least one SKU. The required fields under product are name, description, and slug. And under SKUs, the required fields are price, including value and unit, name, and slug. You can add additional fields in if you had them set up over in the Webflow dashboard. So back in instructions, the structure we've given it for product includes the slug, the name, and the description, the required fields. And SKU includes slug, price, and name. Now we have included a couple of additional fields here, and that's because we know they're set up in the template in Webflow. One of those is main-image in the SKU section, and full description and category in the product section. Because we know these relate to pre-existing, already set up fields within our Webflow schema. Next, with our create image tool, we just need to add in our replicate API key. And we're letting our assistant provide the prompt for that image generation. The next node is our create product and SKUs node. Here we're giving it the product and SKU JSON that our assistant has generated. You can also set the publish status to be staging, where Webflow will wait for you to approve it for publish, or you can have it set live immediately. Now all that's left to do is hit ship and test out our product generation workflow. All done. Looks like we've got a tasty new cheeseburger ready to be added to our site. If we head back to Webflow, you'll see that under products, we have a new product ready and waiting to publish. Looks delicious. Let's hit publish and we'll get it up onto the site immediately. But what if we want to go one step further? and actually have it featured on our home page in its own dedicated section. Well, in Webflow, we've got a Browse Our Menu section, which includes a number of tabs across the top. These are all housed within a container that contains a tabs component. Let's copy and paste a new tab into our tab menu round, name it Featured,
then change the filter to be categories contains featured. Then just drag the featured tab to be the top selection in the tab menu. Then hit publish. And we've got a regularly rotating featured menu item tempting hungry customers. One final thing. Once you've created your first automated product, head back to BuildShip and copy the thread ID into your OpenAI Assistant node. That will ensure that your assistant has a memory of the products it's created in the past and is able to generate a unique item for you each time, such as our spicy chicken sandwich here. Supercharge your Webflow e-commerce site so it does the heavy lifting while you focus on what you do best, running your business. There's a lot of potential with the powerful combination of Webflow and BuildShip. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Join us over on Discord, and happy building.